So I'm sure you're familiar that uh, the concept that Australia is famous for Shiraz, but the Barossa Valley, now that's the sweet spot, the heartland of Shiraz. And tonight we're going to explore with our guest exactly why that is. I'm Natalie McLean, editor of Canada's largest wine newsletter and website at nataliemclean.com. And you've joined me here on the Sunday Sipper Club, where we gather every Sunday night at 6 p.m. Eastern, that's Toronto, New York time, to talk to the most intriguing people in the wine world. Now, before I get started and introduce our guest, um, just post in the comments below, and I'll check in on Facebook over here. Let me refresh the page. Have you ever had a Shiraz from the Barossa Valley? I'm sure you've had Australian Shiraz, but have you had one from the Barossa Valley. And Beverly is already here. Nice to see you, Beverly. I'm going to post this comment here. Now I'm going to delay a little bit because our guest, a winemaker from Australia, is having a few technical difficulties. I'm so glad AV is fine. And thank you. And Lori is here. Looking forward to tonight's chat. So we did our usual tech test run uh, with the winemaker because he's joining me all the way from Australia. And wouldn't you know, they're having a, um, a bit of a tech meltdown. So we'll see if he joins. I'm going to keep the line open here. We're still going to have a chat tonight. I've got all the wines in front of me, so we can still talk about this and other things. Okay. Um, good, Lori. All right. Separately, I just want to let you know, and I'll post this as well below, that, let me just get into the comments over here on Facebook, registration for my uh, wine course the quick start to Get Wine Smart is closing tonight. Yes, that's it. Final hours. Don't miss out. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I was on CTV recently talking about it with Leanne Kuzak. And it's a series of live interact interactive workshops that start in January. All of the videos are recorded. It's a lot of uh, hands-on, getting to know the material, lots of different tools and techniques to help you remember all of that information that's out there from how to pair wine to how to choose a great bottle in the liquor store to talking to the sommelier without uh, getting nervous. <laughs> all right, so, all right, Beverly has not tried a, um, well, I guess a Shiraz from Peter Lehman or perhaps from the Barossa Valley, but she would like to. That's the spirit, uh, Beverly. Elaine, all is good. Got three bottles of Peter Lehman's wines. Excellent, so on trend. And Elaine, I know you're going to join our wine course, so I'm so excited to have you uh, join that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I have not heard yet from our guest other than emails saying, ah, we're having a tech meltdown here. So it may be that uh, we don't get them on live tonight, but that's okay. We're still going to move forward because we always do. We're always here at 6 p.m. every Sunday, aren't we? All right, Paul Hollander and Patty have joined us from Virginia. Hey guys. Uh, looks like a festive wreath behind you. Yes, this is a, oh, I think someone has joined us. Let me see. I hear someone. Oh, there you are, Tim. Okay, Tim, let's get you pinned here on the video. Can you hear and see me, Tim? Oh, uh, yeah, I can. There you are. Yes. <laughs> yes, it worked all the way from Australia. How's that, folks? <laughs> I explained that we were having a few technical difficulties. Let me just bring you up here, Tim. We'll do things all out of order here because we don't get hung up on formalities. So, Tim, you look you look and sound like you're next door, not in Australia. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Excellent. And if everybody can comment, um, if they can hear and see Tim okay, I, I can. Um, I think your volume's fine, Tim. So, um, yeah, I just talked about uh, just briefly high level why the Bar or sorry, teasing them as to the fact that the Barossa is such a special region for um, Shiraz. But let me introduce you properly, Tim, because I have not yet done that. Wasn't sure if you were. This is the real concept of flying winemaker. He just flew in for our chat here. I'm so happy this worked. And I'm so glad you guys kept persisting on your end. Um, so. So let me, um, let me talk about Tim, and I'll go to some slides you sent me, Tim, while I'm doing this intro, um, because yeah. some super slides you sent me. So our guest this evening is um, the third generation of his family to make wine in the Barossa. He is a graduate of the prestigious winemaking program at the University of Adelaide, 
And in the five years since he graduated in 2008, he's worked eight vintages in, or sorry, he's worked vintages in eight different regions across the US, Italy, and Canada. His flying winemaker experience has shaped the way he approaches his craft at Peter Lehman in the heart of the Barossa Valley. And I'm so happy he joins me live now from the Barossa. Hello, Tim, again. <laughs> Thanks, Natalie. All right. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. <laughs> good, good, good. And everybody is really pleased you're here. We've got in the house, we, I'll, I'll feed you the comments, Tim, because I know you can't see them. And um, But Anne is here from Halifax. Glad you make it made it, Tim. You're looking good and sounding great. Uh, Beverly is in California. Don't you just love this when the technology works? Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> A wing and a prayer, but sometimes when it all comes together, it's it's terrific. Lori is in Ottawa. Hello, Tim. Paul is in Virginia. We've tried several of your wines. Um, and who else has gone by? Jim Clark was here. Folks, keep posting your comments because they go by so quickly. Uh, and then they I can only see five at a time. So let's get down to this. Um, I am so looking forward to this uh Tim. Now, I've given you just sort of a brief overview intro. Maybe you can fill in some details if I left something out that you'd like to mention. And I'm hearing squirrels in the background. Are you training up squirrels for Christmas, that uh, album uh, of the yeah. chipmunks? Yes. No, there's, there's some parrots in the... I'm actually outside. Um, oh, you're outside. Yeah, I'm on the... Uh, on the at the cellar door balcony. Um, oh, wow. Sitting outside, which is great. Yeah, it so, is. And your reception is so good. Is it? Is it, okay? it is. Yeah, you're not even breaking yeah, up or anything. But I can't believe you have parrots there. That is just so cool. Yeah, yeah, and there's some galas and kookaburras as well. Oh so. yeah, the so, kookaburras. Yeah, that's classic, so great. Uh, Australian. You're bringing it all tonight. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So um, yeah, fill in any details you'd like, and maybe I don't know, tell us something that would surprise us about you. Whatever you like, whatever you'd like to throw in oh, there sure, that I left sure. out. Well, um, I guess kicking off, it's a pretty beautiful. Monday morning here in the yep. Barossa. We're expecting a top of about 36 degrees Celsius, um, so it's wow. pretty warm. Um, yeah. But that's not, not atypical at this time of year. It's starting to warm up and uh, everything is looking fantastic from the grapevine point of view. Everything's very healthy and everyone's quite happy at this stage. So it's, um, yeah, so far so good. Wow, that's but, great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's always good to um, to do something different and get out of the office and do a tasting like this. It's very, <laughs> with, very different for me. With, <laughs> with all the wildlife. Folks, just make sure that, um, can you let us know that you can hear Tim? I can hear the birds loud, but I can hear you too. I don't know how far you are from your mic, but let's just make sure they don't drown out you, Tim. Okay, sorry. No, no, that's okay. It's kind of cool, but um, <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's good. You just need to... Out squawk them. Just talk a bit closer. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. That's great. Okay. So now I know we covered this uh, when we did our little short promo chat, um, but tell us in your view why the Barossa is such a special region for making Shiraz. Oh, I think the number one uh, most special thing about the Barossa is the old, amazing old vines that we have here. I mean, we're, we're fortunate enough to not have um, had any phylloxera come to Peter Lehman or come to the Barossa. Um, so with the vines that we have, uh, some of them are over 140 years old and they are the oldest uh, Shiraz vines in the world. Um, so it's a little bit of quite a historical um, region uh, and, we're, and we're really trying to hold on to that because it's so unique. So that's, that's probably the number one, um, I guess, most special thing about the Barossa. Wow. Which is really, really cool. <laughs> I'm still distracted by those birds. Uh, do they like eating the grapes? Uh, they do. And if we need to uh, put nets on them, that's the kookaburra in the background. I don't know if you heard that. Ah, what sound uh, do they make? Do they make that unique sound? What is it like? Some it's, it's, Like a person uh, almost. It sounds like they're, they're laughing. Like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yeah, like almost like a human laughter, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, uncanny. <laughs> that's, that's really cool, though. Um, uh, okay, so... Yes, Paul is saying, Tim, your volume is a bit low for Tim, but the birds are fine. <laughs> so I don't know if you can get it um, closer to your mic. The birds are really loud in the background. Do we have a yeah. scarecrow? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try and hold the mic. Yeah, that might help, now. just yeah. so that you're louder than the birds. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> It's kind of cool. It's like a National Geographic edition of our Sunday Sipper Club. Yeah. 
David Attenborough. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's great. So, folks, just tell us as we go along if you can still hear Tim okay. Um, those birds sound hungry. Um, okay, they so are, they are. <laughs> we'll try to focus. But, yeah, do keep speaking into your microphone there, Tim, and I, I hope that will be good. But I'll keep watching the comments to make sure people can hear you. Um, so maybe you can take us back to the moment, Tim, when you first realized that you wanted to make wine. I know it's in the family. It's generational, so you grew up around it. But was there a moment when you decided, yes, this is for me. I want to make wine as well. Uh, I, I, I think... Um when I was about 10 years old, I was working or helping my, my father um, during the vintage time, working in a winery. And I was, I was just helping out, um, hosing out the bins as they were dumped into the, into the crusher. And uh, dad was sort of milling around, um, helping out and um, coordinating the team. And um, it was just a really, really good sort of vibe and energy. And um, yeah, I think I, I really, I got sucked in by that, that sort of culture and, um, everyone was hardworking, but having a good time uh, yeah. at the same time. So it was a lot of fun. Yep. And um, yeah, I, I sort of always, I, I've never forgotten that moment. Um, and even though dad was only paying me about $2 an hour uh, to help out, it was still, <laughs> it was still, uh, it wasn't really about the money. It was just about being involved and uh, having such a good time. I love that you know that it was a specific moment going right back to when you were 10, the hoses, etc. Like it really had a an emotional impact on you, clearly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah, fantastic. It All right. Okay, Julian Park is in BC, and he said, the volume is good for me, for him. So I guess both the birds and Tim are coming in loud and clear. <laughs> That's good. Okay. That is great, Tim. Um, so, um, you know, apart from tasting lots of different wines from the Barossa, how can we get to know the wines in the region better in your mind? Is there any sort of suggestion you'd have for, for us to really get to know Barossa versus all of the other regions in Australia? Um, well, things like this are obviously uh, are, yeah, are really yeah. good. Um, good point. Uh, being able to <laughs> taste um, and talk to the winemakers. But yeah. if, if you do make it to the region, uh, the best way to experience the Barossa is to visit the restaurants. And in the last oh. five to 10 years, there's just been an explosion of um, amazing restaurants that are delivering, you know, really high quality food um, and matching it to, to the wines um, really, really well. So I think there's, there's been a lot more investment into, you know, making sure that the, the best wines are matched to the best foods. And often those those restaurants they'll have a few little hidden gems um, stashed away in the cellar from back vintages, um, and they're all re always really good. And, and more often than not, you'll see uh, a local winemaker or two at these restaurants having a good time as well. So you can sort of rub shoulders with them and uh, ask a few questions. That sounds great. It sounds like a gastronomic hedonistic kind of vacation that I, I'm sure many of us here would love to take. Um, the restaurants, key key thing. I, I I visited Australia twice. Just loved the the cuisine, the matching of the cuisine and the wines there. It's just it's it's unlike any other. And then you're in the environment itself. The land is all around you. You can see the soil. It's a, it's an extraordinary experience, and I do encourage everyone to go. All right. So um, Lori says I was fortunate uh, um, to be at the Australian High Commissioner's Summer Wine Tasting. Uh, lots of wines, beautiful garden setting. Excellent, Lori. That sounds Hello. fantastic. All right. So um, just a couple more questions here, and then we'll d dive into some wines here, Tim. Um, I always ask this of everybody, but maybe take us to the worst moment of your wine career. Sort of um, maybe not so much bad weather, because I'm sure that's the worst moment for every winemaker, but is there a particular moment where, you know, it was just kind of the low of the lows and maybe how you recovered or how things changed after that, but maybe take us to that moment if you, if you can recall one. Well, uh, I can, I've got a bit of a funny one. Okay. Um, when I was, when I was really, really young, um, okay. I was working. My dad was working at a, a winery called Sepulch Field and I lived across the road, or we lived as a family across the road, and we had a, a, um, a Labrador, his name was Angus, okay. and he would often follow uh, dad to the winery. And I, I went along with this morning with, with Angus, we, we went across and uh, dad was in the winery and there was these big open sort of fermenters, 
and uh, Angus thought it would be a good good idea to jump in the Ooh. fermenter, uh, full of red wine, full of red grapes. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, he managed to uh, to float, and Dad was able to grab him out. <laughs> um, but he he was a, a tinned or a bit like this shirt. He was a shade of red for about two weeks afterwards. Oh, that's funny! Wow, golden Labrador. <laughs> Well, I, I guess that's not the wine fault they call like wet dog or dog hair or whatever. Yeah, that's maybe, maybe that's where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Wow. Yeah, he's a lucky dog to have survived. Um, Sam, is, yeah. Sam, Sam joins us from BC. Julian, are you seeing any growth in sparkling Shiraz? I'd love to drink this wine with turkey uh, for Christmas, rocking around the Christmas tree, says Julian. Yeah, that's an absolute favorite of ours this time of year. Yeah. And, um, the, the black queen shiraz that we make is, is a staple at most people's uh, breakfast Christmas day. It's uh, just a classic Australian um, dish, I guess, with the eggs and bacon um, first oh, thing in the morning. Eggs and bacon. Oh, that would be so good. And sparkling shiraz. I can think of those sparkling shiraz would also be so good to moisten up turkey. Because you've got the yep. bubbles, you've got the juiciness of that fleshy Shiraz. I mean, it just, and it's so holiday. It's like cranberries in a glass kind of thing. Be Absolutely. So yeah, beautiful. That's, a, that's a great match. <laughs> Ooh, my, my mouth is watering just talking about it. Um, <laughs> Paul is saying the volume is good now, and I should say good morning. Good morning, Tim. Yes, it's, it's what is it, 9, 10 o'clock your time, 10 a.m.? Uh, 9.45. 9.45, so Monday. He's joining yep. me live Monday from, <laughs> so if you've just joined us, uh, we're here on the Sunday Sipper Club, where we gather every uh, Sunday at 6 p.m., Toronto, New York time, but we're here live with Tim Dolan, I should say that way, uh, with Peter Lehman Wines. It, he's joining me live from the winery in Australia. Those are kookaburros and, kook, most kookaburros, magpies, yep. in the background. Yep. Okay. <laughs> So we're doing the full <laughs> National Geographic edition today of the Sunday Sipper Club. Um, all right. So now let's, let's uh, all, of course, go to the best moment of your winemaking career. Um, can you take us there? What was, what's been memorable so far in terms of the best moment? Um, well, some of the best moments I've had have actually been overseas. Um, okay. I, I had a, a, a lot of fun uh, working in Canada and a Hillebrand winery. In, oh, in, Hillebrand, yeah. Niagara on the Lake, yeah, uh, but probably more specifically working in Barolo. Um, I remember we were having a, a really tough day. Uh, it was a long, long day as, as you do during during the harvest period. And, and then afterwards, after the, we'd finished working, we sat down at a local restaurant and, and just had a couple of glasses of wine with some, some sort of tapas style food and um, just uh, to unwind. And I think that really took brought me back to to my roots and um, I think it was just you know a good chance to relax take a deep breath and, and then go again but um, I think just just being part of that culture um, hmm. you know the Italians know how to do it so well uh, right. just to really experience that was amazing so you must have been in northern Italy at a winery if you were making Barolo yeah, yeah. quite yes. the experience yeah. That's such a diverse yeah. experience to bring now to Shiraz because that's a full-bodied wine in its own right, but a completely different style from what you're making today. Yeah, almost almost the opposite, really. It's, oh. uh, it's a challenging grape, but it, yeah. it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking four and 20 blackbirds baked in a pie with Shiraz. That might be a good pairing. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so Lori says, uh, you got into winemaking from your father. Um, do you have children or and or would you encourage them to get into the business if you do or don't? Uh, no children yet. However, okay. I, I think um, I would never pressure them to do it. But I think this sort of the wine culture kind of sucks you in. I, I think yeah. a lot, most people that work in it, are, are, um, you know, they, they do it for the love and the passion. So yeah. I think that would that would probably rub off. I think it, it does. Yeah, starting at age 10, the recruitment begins. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cheap labor. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure. I know you're in a different location from where you plan to be. I don't know if you have wines in front of you, Tim, and or all the yeah. wines you had, because uh, I have, I think, about eight in front of me. Uh, do you You're have any white me. wines? Yeah, you have them. Great. So yep. shall we start with some whites? Is that where you'd yeah, like sure. to start? Yep. So we'll, yes. we'll go through all of them. Um, because I, I have to say, uh, 
the Rieslings that you sent or that your team sent are extraordinary. I know our focus is going to be on Shiraz tonight, but um, I have the Peter Lehman Portrait Shiraz. I know you can't quite see my camera, but um, Peter Lehman Portrait Shiraz. Oh, sorry, Riesling. Um, got Shiraz on the brain. So do you have that one? I do, yep. I've okay. Got that in front of me. So maybe you just want to say a few words about that. There it is. Great. Um, as we taste that one. Yeah, so this is uh, a pretty classic Eden Valley Riesling. Okay. Um, it's made from, from a blend of about six different growers. And the Eden Valley is a little bit higher in elevation as opposed to the Barossa Valley. It's about 550 metres and the Barossa hovers around the 300 metres above sea level. So okay. you get cooler nights, um, really schisty, sort of shaly soil, um, very tough conditions for the vines, but perfect for growing Riesling. And... Um, Peter Lehman has really, I guess, been a, a really uh, strong advocate for, for Eden Valley Riesling and, and we always pride ourselves on making, we're trying to make the best Riesling each year. Absolutely. So, so this is, position us, if you could, for a moment between the Eden Valley and Barossa. Where are they in relation to each other? So they're only about a 20 minute drive. Um, okay. However, you sort of, behind the Barossa, there's, there's a valley. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, a, a, a range of hills, and over that range of hills, which is directly behind me, uh, is is where the Eden Valley is. So it sort of goes along flat and then okay. rises up, and then um, and then you get the Eden Valley. Okay, great. <laughs> it's it's like they disagree with you. Um, <laughs> so um, I've got both. I've got the Barossa Riesling, the portrait, and I've got the Wigan. Eden Valley. So I think you were starting to describe the Wigan Eden Valley. Um, and so how would you differentiate the two Rieslings as well in style now? Yeah, so the Wigan is our very best uh, Riesling of vintage yeah. and that, that's quite often a single vineyard. Um, yeah. We bottle it in the year of vintage, however, uh, we hold on to it in the cellar for five years and then release it um, yeah. at five years, which we feel it's developed some of those toasty sort of characters and it's... Um, have a little bit of bottle age, so it's it's not as that that searing acid that sort of right. softened out a little bit. Right. Um, but this time of year, a perfect match to any sort of seafood mm -hmm. um, in, in that sort of warmer weather. It's gorgeous, I must say. Um, yeah. And I don't want to scare anyone off, but when I say petrol, I mean it in a loving, good way. <laughs> but it's like whetstone petrol, and it's just it's it's so iconic and so savory, like. You know, I think there's a savoriness to this wine that you often don't get with white wines, often in reds, but not so much in the whites. And this yeah, is just beautiful. That, that real mineral, sort yeah. of the lime juice character, um, which we love. And 2012 was an incredible vintage. It's probably one of the best we, we've ever seen. So um, this, this wine will age for 15, 20 years, maybe. We, yeah. we don't really know because it, but, uh, yeah, it's one to sort of hold in the cellar for a little while. And, see how it develops absolutely all right so i'm going to bring out the i don't know if you have the margaret semillon from the barossa yes always interesting yep. semillon goes through sort of a a dumb stage isn't that it a, like a mute stage or whatever uh, does it go through a low a bottle low and when does yeah, that does happen same. usually uh, it's usually the first two or three years after okay you bottle it uh, yeah it, it's quite um quite neutral very very quiet um, and then give it three to five years and it, and it really opens up and, and just becomes amazing. So you, you sort of the rewards of patience with this one, you've got to, you've got to hold on to it um, yeah. and really just wait for it to, to explode because it, it is an incredible wine. You've just got to give it time. And how would you differentiate Semillon for us, um, particularly the, the kind you make, the style you make, from... Um, Riesling or other white wines. Like, what is it about Semillon? Do what are we looking for that might be key aromas in this wine? Uh, well, for us, we're, we're trying to pick it quite quite early, so we're looking for not any green characters, but that more lemon sherbet character. You can really taste yeah. it in the grapes, yeah. um, and then that'll sort of develop develop that lemon, and then, then it will become sort of a, a little bit honeyed okay. character and a bit okay. of that buttered toast. Um, in development but, but really you don't want any sort of tropical flavors any of that 
overwrite or, or write the characters. Uh, the wine and white age as well, if, if it goes into that riper spectrum. So that, that's really what, what we're trying to aim for. Okay, great. Awesome. All right, I'm going to refresh the Facebook page because I have been captivated by the conversation and the wines. So I'm not ignoring you folks. Please keep posting as you... Um, <laughs> those birds. Okay, Jillian, the volume's good for me. All right, good. Excellent. Um, so why don't we move into the reds? Those are the only whites that I have, Tim. Where would you yep, like same. to start on reds? I have Clancy's, I have the Barossa, and I have Portrait. Where would you like to start? I think we'll go with the Clancy's. Yes. And this is a real value-priced wine. <laughs> they're very excited about it. Yeah, is that like are. bird speak for three thumbs up or something? Oh, my I God. I think so, yeah. <laughs> All right. We've got a couple of we've got a couple of people on it now. They're trying to. Um, <laughs> oh, they're fighting the up. birds. It's going to get louder. <laughs> All right. Well, so tell us about Clancy's because I've recommended this a lot uh, on my best value list. It's incredible okay. wine for the money. But tell us what what goes into this and how it relates to your the other wines in your lineup. Yeah. So uh, I guess uh, it's a blend of Cabernet. Shiraz and Merlot, which are the three principal uh, varieties grown in the Barossa. Okay. Um, not in, not necessarily in that, in that order. But, um, yeah, you'll find those those varieties planted most widely in the Barossa. Um, and it's just a classic sort of an Australian red blend, um, something that's a little bit more easy drinking, uh, Cabernet dominant, so you're getting a lot of those lovely um Cabernet tannins, mm -hmm. um, but the Shiraz and Merlot is sort of softening that out as well. So, well, for us um, in Australia, it's the it's the perfect sort of barbecue red on a, on a warm warmer spring evening or something like that. Absolutely, and spring for you as we head into sort of deep winter here. But it's just as versatile oh, yeah. here. It's warming and good for hearty fare. But this it would is, work with is. turkey as well because it's so supple and smooth. There's not there's no grippy tannins it's just smooth and supple and um i can't recall offhand what the price is but i'm sure it's 15 or less here in canada yeah. something like that it could be even less than that but it's a really good deal um fantastic so where would you go next after this one uh i think we go with the portrait range so all right and, and then yep. for us. sure the portrait there we go portrait shiraz i have it here we go do you want to go portrait cab or portrait Shiraz first? Uh, we can go Shiraz. It's, it's okay, why don't we? Good. Okay, and this is one that's readily available here in Canada. <laughs> Seems like one holdout in the background. <laughs> one lead, ringleader is like <laughs> still yeah. trying to rally the others. <laughs> no, uh, we've got someone spraying water at the neck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for unfair treatment no. to birds wow they just no. went maybe feed them somewhere else that's yeah. uncanny <laughs> and suddenly the birds went silent okay <laughs> i hope it's just water they're using <laughs> oh, oh yeah no, it's just water, yeah. <laughs> okay um, so we've got the portrait shiraz all right yeah so this this is a great introduction to um to barossa shiraz and what and what we do best um and it's a collection Peter Lehman has over 140 growers that, that bring in fruit um, to the winery. Okay. So we don't own a lot of vineyards. Um, but we were sort of founded on, on um, growers bringing us their fruit. Mm -hmm. And this, this Portrait Shiraz is a collection of about 60 of those growers. So it's a, a really good way to sort of introduce yourself to the Brossa and Shiraz. And um, it's sort of re that really red fruit. Um, yes. Quite a little bit of pepper and chocolate, but sort of, um, yeah, just just a, a great sort of. I think this um, with a pizza on a Saturday night, if you're relaxing, is, mm -hmm. is pretty much perfect. Yeah, so juicy, so wonderful, and yet I'm starting to see or feel the the added structure that's here, the added structure and balance versus the Clancy's. Um, yep. It's lovely. Again, really value price the whole lineup. Um, Paul is saying um, locally we have Clancy's and the Portrait Cab and Shiraz. No whites though. Uh, he said 
looking for the whites. Um, Sam in BC, who teaches wine classes, says, uh, could Tim talk a bit about the alcohol levels in the red, uh, in the reds? A friend bought a Shiraz the other day. It was 15.9, almost to the fortified category. I'm not sure that he's talking about your wine, but I think an Australian wine. Let's look at this one. This one's 14.5, which yeah. I think for Australian Shiraz in the heart of the Barossa, a very warm climate, is pretty balanced with the fruit. It certainly doesn't taste warm uh, yeah, to I me. Think, yeah. yeah. But the Barossa's um, undergoing a little bit of a renaissance, and you're seeing those alcohols actually come back. So right. it surprises me that that if that um, there was one that was fifteen point nine, because really a lot of people are going around that fourteen five, yeah. um, maybe a little bit more. Um, that's sort of that's sort of where everybody's trending. Uh, sure. Like there's always going to be a few outliers, of course, but um, even lower than that, you know, thirteen percent Shiraz I've seen before, and that's quite spicy and red fruited. Oh, that's but nice. But for, for Lehmans, we've always been around that fourteen and a half. Um, sort of percent which we feel is about right for our style well again it's about balance so if you have the alcohol in balance with the fruit ripeness the tannins the structure the acid everything then you've got a, a a complete package a wine that doesn't taste hot because the the heat of the alcohol sticks out um as long as everything again comes down to balance i think yeah yeah you did yeah. Right. yeah. Sam says it was a lower priced wine with a catchy label. Always, I always suspect catchy labels. <laughs> okay, it wasn't a Peter Lehman wine. Okay, thanks for clar <laughs> clarifying, Sam. Uh, Stephen Andrews says hello from Waterloo. I'm waiting for my new granddaughter. Ah, so to be born. Wow. Um, I'll be drinking your Shiraz in celebration tonight, Tim. So you're toasting oh, in a new awesome. life tonight, your wines. <laughs> Woohoo! Congratulations. That's pretty neat. Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. All right, so should we go over to the Cabernet now, or where would you like to go next? Yeah, um, I think we do the Cabernet. So the Peter Lehman Portrait Cabernet. So always interesting to look at the differences here between the Shiraz and the Cabernet. Okay. Yeah, so Cabernet in Australia is uh, undergoing a little bit of a revolution, and it's starting to, it's, the wheels are starting to turn, and it's starting to um, gain a bit more popularity it's sort of been hiding in the shadows for a little while and okay. Shiraz absolutely in the foreground but um yeah Cabernet uh for us um, I remember Peter Lehman always said to me um don't ever forget about Cabernet you sort of you, you can forget about it you, you focus on Shiraz but in certain years Cabernet and the Brosser can, can actually be, be better than Shiraz I know that's a big call but um yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it does just age phenomenally yeah, this one's got a lot of minty cool, that eucalyptus, but blackberry ripe, yep. but very structured, very elegant, long finish. That's the, and that, yeah, I think you summed that up perfectly. It's, oh, it's no, you... Blackberry please, can cease. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Feel free <laughs> yeah. to jump in. <laughs> mm, wow. Quite a difference. Completely different wine from the Shiraz. Just so beautifully structured. Yeah, I, um, I think... Yeah. You get some a really really cool cabernets in, in Australia, and Michael River are doing a really good job. Coonawarra, some great cabernets coming out of there, and then the Brosser has got its own style as well. So it's a really interesting varietal um, on yeah. the Australian market. Absolutely, and you know what surprises me in a good way about this is that it's got such great balancing acidity. It's not flabby, overripe, or whatever heavy. It's 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 leaf, and it's it's got that juicy wake up your senses acidity along the sides of your mouth it's quite nice again i'm thinking of more bird dishes to go with it but anyway <laughs> that will be a, a meme in this conversation all right <laughs> um murray johnson what price range are your wines if i've missed that already so um i'm not sure if tim knows off by heart the canadian prices clancy's i i'm sure comes in at under 15. And it's okay, uh, folks, good. because I I will include um, in the comments here a link to all of the wines. So on the blog post where we will eventually embed this video, and you can rewatch it to your heart's delight. We also post all the wines, which link 
to the different liquor stores, whether it's LCBO, BC, SAQ, wherever, their prices and their availability in the stores closest to you. So all of that's there, and I'll repin that at the end of the conversation. But the, the wines so far, roughly speaking, I mean, I'm probably taking a guess, the portrait 20, 25, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Port, I've got I've got it here. The portrait's oh, about twenty. Excellent. Um, Clancy's eighteen. Oh, that's great. This is, this is LCBO prices. Yes, that's what but we they're want. All about the same. Canadian and prices, yeah. The Barossum, which we'll taste next. Oh yes. Is, uh, that's t about twenty-two dollars, so a little bit of a step up. Yeah, absolutely. Good segue. Let's go on to that Barossum. All right, Murray. There you go. You're welcome. Um, and Lori's saying, uh, what is the alcohol level on the Cabernet? I have the Shiraz. I have had the Shiraz that are fuller bodied than the Cabernet. Is that the case? So on the Shiraz, we've got 14.5. And on the Cabernet, you probably know this off by heart, Tim, we've got 14.5 as well. So the Shiraz feels fuller and bigger to me, just the juiciness of the fruit itself, but the Cabernet... Um, is no wimpy wine. It comes off as longer and elegant. Yeah, yeah it's not uncommon for the Cabernets to, to be more like around 14%. Right. You really okay. can't avoid those overripe characters because then it just tastes like a, a bright red. Yeah. Red for us. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so I've just poured a splash of the Barossin. Maybe talk to us about how this is different from the wines we've just yeah. tasted. So this is a... a one of our latest, or if not our latest release in the portfolio. Uh, yep. You can see the label. Yeah. It's um, actually, actually modeled on um, a tasting book that was found in Peter Lehman's cellar. Ah. So it's, uh, they've sort of found that design and then going, well, we can probably, probably make a label out of that. And um, it's quite textured, the label, it's really cool. Um, and it's a little bit different because we've actually gone back to using a bit of American oak. Uh, huh as opposed to, to most of our wines, which are predominantly French oak. Good joke. And what difference does that make? Uh, we feel it gives it a little bit more lift, uh, okay. a really sort of a bit more spice and coconut. Um, it was very, very popular back in the 80s and 90s, and then a lot of winemakers went to French oak. Uh, and now we're, we're sort of like, okay, well, let's have a look at what American oak does. And, and we're, we're really excited by um, the influence that it has on, on this wine. And, um, we think it sort of really helps the fruit and gives it some lift, but it's also very, very soft in the, in the structure. Okay, awesome. All right, uh, Elaine Bruce in um, Calgary says the tannin is so smooth. What oak do you use? Ah, that's just what we're talking about, Elaine. What oak do you use and for how long? We have the cab portrait too. So again, we're talking American versus French oak. Yes, we answered while you were asking. Just... Uh, your mind reading, Elaine. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Andrew says, uh, Brass and Shiraz is so nice. Get the Barbie going and slap on a steak. Absolutely, Stephen. It's great. <laughs> that <is perfect. laughs> That's beautiful. And yet I, I see the step up here in quality and just the, the, the texture, the, the structure again. It's really illuminating tasting these side by side. If I just had one at a time, you know, I wouldn't know. Um, but... This way you really see and hear the difference. I think this would go with grilled um, grilled magpie. Good grill for your magpies this morning. <laughs> okay. Um, right then. So now I still have one more wine here that I was sent, and that is the Futures. Maybe you can tell oh, awesome. us what the Futures means, like why it was named that and what's in it. Yeah, so... Um, when Peter Lehman first started the company, uh, he didn't um, have a lot of money to pay the growers. So okay. he actually, uh, he said to them, I'll make the wine and I'll sell it um, on the market in a couple of years' time once the wine's ready. And uh, once once I start making um, some money from that wine, uh, then you know, I'll start paying. So there was that sort of two-year futures program which he set up and um this wine is, is, is named in honor of that pact he made with the growers. When he, when he Sorry, I'm not quite hearing that, Tim. Uh, what, do, what did he say? It was sold. Can you repeat that last bit? Uh, yeah, so he, he sold um, 
the great, the, he sold the wine two years after he made it. Okay. With that money, he used that to pay back the growers that had sold him the fruit. So there was a bit of a futures pack that he had. Um, fortunately, it paid off because we're still here today, nearly you know, 40 years on. Okay, awesome. Now, is this a blend? No, it's Shiraz. It's all Shiraz, eh? All Shiraz. So this is okay. um, from 2014, great vintage. Okay. Uh, and it's a little bit of a step up from, from the Brosson in terms of the structure. Um, yeah. 30% uh, new French oak, so there's, there's a bit more French oak influence. Um, and it's a little bit more richly structured. You're getting more black fruit. Um, that was a loud one. Um, <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, and this is this is one that you really want to put in your cellar for, for a few years uh, just to let it settle, settle out. Absolutely. This one's just gorgeous. I mean, and so what makes, you said it, 2014 was a good vintage. What makes it a good vintage in Barossa? What are you looking for that really brings it together and makes it a better vintage than others? Yeah, so uh, the Barossa is, is a Mediterranean climate, so we, we get quite... Um, warm dry summers uh, but we don't want it to get too hot uh, the last thing we want is a heat wave where it can be 10 days of above 35 degrees celsius and uh, that can really put a big strain on the grapes particularly when they're, when they're or the vines rather when they're about to when the grapes are about to be ripe so if we can if there's no heat waves uh, and it stays warm and dry throughout it's, it's pretty much for us perfect vintage and in 2014 was certainly that there was a bit of bit of rain in january which sort of helped the um the grapes have a bit of moisture and uh, the vines rather and um then after that it was a pretty mild cool season throughout so we we're very very happy that's fantastic and i should say i have for been lax a little bit tonight in saying that um well first of all if you've just joined us um uh, elaine says she wants to see the birds um <laughs> Uh, you are here on the Sunday Sipper Club. This is the National Geographic edition. We are out uh, in the wilds of Australia with Tim Dolan, Peter Lehman Wines, and the kookaburras and the magpies and everything else, just waiting to get into the, the glasses of wine he has poured. Uh, little do they know, they shall be a pairing tonight um, on the table. <laughs> but we gather here every Sunday, folks, at 6 p.m. Eastern, that's Toronto, New York time, to talk to the most interesting people and wildlife in the world of wine. Um, I should say, um, if you share this video, so if you click on share, um, you can be eligible to get a premium bottle of Peter Lehman Shiraz tonight. Uh, well, I'll announce the winner next week. So click share and make a comment when you share. At the end of tonight's broadcast, I will be announcing the winner of last week's uh, share contest, and that will be a winner of Bianca Bosker's New York Times bestselling wine book, The Cork Dork. So while you're there, click on follow and you'll know when we go live. All righty. So, <laughs> got to stay focused here. <laughs> those birds yes. want to take us <laughs> off track. All right. Okay. I think those are all of the wines I have, Tim. Yeah. Um, maybe just, uh, I'll see what other comments come in. We're already almost at the 45 minute mark, which the time has gone like that as it often does. Um, Kind of, what's the most memorable thing anyone's ever said about your wines? Can you recall any comments that stood out over your career so far? I know it hasn't been long yet, but. Um, oh, I think some of the most memorable moments have been getting some praise from, from yeah. some friends that, uh, that I know are very honest, so. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not afraid to tell it like it is. And, uh, you know, if. if, if and particularly my winemaking friends, um, you know, my peers. If, if 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 there's some some positive feedback um, from them, like, that's that's been some really memorable sort of experiences. Um, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. There's. I mean, it's it's just a lot of fun, really. Um, yeah. But yeah. certainly vintage and, and making the wines and seeing the wines develop. That's that's you know, that's for me the best experience you can have. That's fantastic. Laurie says, I was reading about your very special vineyard collection. Do you think you will have a vintage this year? Yes. Yes. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a couple uh, that we've just made in 2017. Okay. Um, and we're about to bottle our 2016s in January. So you should see them uh, come on the market. Fantastic. All right. So I've got just some quick questions to finish off. They're just for fun, Tim. Short answers yep. are fine. Whatever comes top of mind. 
<laughs> like I, I don't even know if you've turned 30, but what advice would you give to your 30-year-old self or maybe your 20-year-old self if that's not relevant <laughs> yet? <laughs> what advice would you give to your younger self just starting out uh, in this world? Yeah, I think just don't sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, just you, you don't want to take love too seriously. Um, you know, it's, it's just all about having fun, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Great. What's the best piece of wine advice you've ever received? Uh, my former boss, Andrew Wigan, who was the chief winemaker, he always said to me, you make your own luck. And I've always taken that on board. You make your own luck. Love it. What's uh, the most useful wine gadget you've ever come across? Uh, I've, I've, I've seen or I've, a few friends of mine have the Corrigan. I don't have one oh, myself, yeah. but um, yep. that, that's that's. That's been really cool. Um, and that sort of, yeah. yeah, I think to not be, you don't want to have to drink a whole bottle at once. So I think you yeah. know, that's, that's a really good idea. And just for anybody who's not familiar, a needle goes down in the cork. You don't take the cork out. You can you can pour a little bit of wine without removing yeah. the cork, and then it reseals. The cork reforms around the needle puncture. I just got one of those for myself. Actually, I'm looking forward to oh, wow. trying it out over the holidays. Yeah, yeah and, absolutely. And I think developing it with um, screw cap as well, which is ah, pretty amazing technology. That so is, yeah. You might see that coming. That is something. Um, if you could share a person, uh, a bottle of wine with anyone outside the wine world, living or dead, who would that be? Oh, um, this is probably a little cliche, but I've, I've always uh, admired Nelson Mandela. Ah. So probably him. And I'll probably ask him whether he liked the wine. <laughs> if he liked the wine? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's great. No, yeah. it'd, be, it would, it'd be amazing to listen to him and, and hear his story. Yeah, absolutely. He's a hero. Now, is there anything we haven't covered that you'd like to add before we sort of wrap up? Uh, uh, not really. I, I apologize for the birds. <laughs> That's okay. It made for an interesting <laughs> backdrop. It really did. Yeah. We forged yeah, through yeah. and... Uh, <laughs> they sound like they need to be fed. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Monday morning, they're a bit hungry after the weekend. But, um, yeah, exactly. No, I, I, I really encourage um, everybody to come to the grocery and, and yeah. always most welcome to, to come to the Absolutely. Wine. Yeah. And I. the wine. And, yeah. Yeah, I visited the Peter Lehman uh, Winery when I was in Australia. It's an extraordinary experience, great tasting room, lots of great restaurants in the area. So I, uh, I underscore your point there. It's a really great one, Tim. So Tim, I'm going to wrap up. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight, uh, especially despite all of the challenges. I, I really appreciate you persisting because we were all looking forward to hearing from you, and it's been a great discussion. Um, and of course, you can always watch the replay, anybody who has missed part of this conversation. Um, I'm going to stay online for another 10 or 15 minutes, uh, folks. Okay. But for now, uh, we'll say goodnight to Tim and to the birds. <laughs> so, um, uh, but I look forward to chatting with you again in the future, Tim. Sounds good. Thank okay, you. take care. Cheers. Okay, bye-bye. Cheers. Bye. Have a good Christmas. Yes, you too. All right, folks. Whoa, that was a lot of birds. <laughs> Futures is awesome. Yes, Elaine, it is indeed awesome. Oh, Beverly, you like your Coravin. Awesome. Okay, folks, so that was interesting. Challenging, but I'm, I'm glad we were able to make that work and that Tim and his team down under persisted. Um, so let me do um, some of the usual things we do at this time of night. I Don't forget, I'll be announcing a winner uh, at the end of uh, this chat. So first of all, what's the most interesting thing you learned dur during our conversation tonight? If you could please post that in the com in the comments below. Was it something about the Barossa? Um, anything Tim said? Maybe it was just how noisy the birds are in that region. <laughs> um, but I would love to hear from you below. Um, as I said, if you take a moment to share this conversation, um, I should talk about what's happening next week uh, because we are on holiday break, but still the person who or one person who shares this conversation tonight um, will win a bottle of premium Peter Lehman Shiraz. So share it, add a comment with your share, and while you're at it, uh, if you follow this page, you'll always know when we go live with a conversation uh, with some of these really, really interesting guests. 
I just want to let you know, you can find me at any of these social media um, links. It's basically Natalie McLean forward slash Facebook will take you to my actual Facebook page. The same with Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And I always encourage everyone to join our wine tribe at nataliemcclain.com because we have lots of fun there. We have the newsletter, we have wine picks, all kinds of stuff happening there. Um, so uh, let me get back to here and the comments. Thank you, Tim. It was informative and fun, Suzanne. Merry Christmas. Thank you, says Beverly. I also wanted to, again, just let you know that uh, just hours from now, the registration for my wine course, the Quick Start to Get Wine Smart, is closing. It's going to be a lot of fun. It doesn't start till January. It's a series of live interactive video workshops, all of which are recorded so you can rewatch them if you miss one or if you just want to rewatch it and get the information a little deeper into your consciousness, you can do that. You have lifetime access to all of that. Um, so, Sam, glad to hear about the move towards lower alcohol wines in the Barossa. Absolutely. And I was surprised to hear of the move back to more use of American oak. Thanks for the program. You're welcome, Sam. Um, so let me just check that I have not forgotten something tonight because I am trying to follow more of a structure here. Okay, so let me talk about uh, next week and the following week. So as you know, it's the holidays. So I love being consistent and showing up for you every week, every Sunday, no matter what, because I think that's what builds a program and a community. And we certainly have done that this year. We've almost had a year of these Sunday Sipper Club gatherings. Uh, next week is Christmas, and then we've got the, the New Year's and so on, and I'm going to be taking off with my family to Mexico in the New Year. So our first Sunday Sipper Club back will be January 14th. Um, I may go live just casually and non-scheduling-like in the interim to share with you some holiday bottles, but it's not going to be one of those regular Sunday Sipper Clubs with a guest. I've already got uh, six guests lined up for... Uh, the new year, some really amazing guests. The head of the Masters of Wine Institute, Jane Masters, just a coincidence that her last name is that. There is a, uh, a gentleman in Toronto who teaches wine, uh, importing wine for pleasure and profit. So if you ever thought of that as a sideline, you're going to want, want to catch that show. Um, we've got uh, the winner of the Canada's Best Sommelier competition, Elise Lambert from Quebec. A, a raft of great guests coming your way. Um, <laughs> Paul, I'm not sure what you mean by that comment, withdrawals. Okay, oh yes, during the holiday, I guess there'll be some withdrawals, okay. <laughs> um, so I need to announce the winner of last week's um, Sunday Sipper Club share. And um, that would be a personally signed book of Bianca Bosker's New York Times bestseller, The Cork Dork. Um, and that is going to Rochelle O'Connor. And I'm not sure that Rochelle is here with us tonight, but she was last week. And uh, Rochelle, that book is coming your way. So guys, if you have ideas for Sunday Sipper Club guests, please post them in the comments below. I'm always looking at that uh, during and after our conversations. If you're watching the replay, please do comment. Um, we get our guests to come back and comment and respond to all the questions. I always encourage the guests to come back and do that so that we catch everything and everyone feels that they were acknowledged and heard because your participation is extremely valuable in these conversations and I truly do value it. So um, please do that. Uh, Tim Dolan will be coming back, I hope, later tonight, which is tomorrow, his time, to, to respond to you. So keep those comments going. Um, not sure that I can think of anything more, but I wish you happy, happy holidays to you and your family, your loved ones. Thank you again. Thanks, everyone, for your well wishes. Stephen, Andrews, Lori, Beverly, Paul, etc., everybody. So good, and uh, I'm glad I'll miss you, too. Uh, but we'll be back again live doing this. You can watch the reruns <laughs> like we all do over the holidays. <laughs> Miracle on 34th Street <laughs> or whatever. Maybe not quite that. Anyway, take care for now. That's, that's it. And I will see you in the new year. Cheers.